Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I thought I will take you plein air painting with me. I used to be not a big fan of plein air painting, but uh, this summer I decided I will try and make that happen. So I want to share some tips that I picked up along the way that maybe will make your experience a little bit more comfortable. I'll share my setup and how I choose a subject. So the first tip is to choose your location that is not very crowded, but also that there are some people walking around, so it's um, pretty safe. I would not necessarily set up in this forest because uh, there aren't that many people here, but also not in a crowded street. So I usually go to a park. Another tip is to choose a sunny day. Today is not that day, but that's the only day I can film. So uh, this, uh, the sun, it creates interesting patterns, contrasts between light and shadow. So that's why I recommend going on a sunny day. And choosing your time, maybe picking an unpopular time like if you're going on a weekend at noon, a park would probably be really busy, so I would go in the evening. These are my tips. I actually don't follow them today. Today is Canada Day, uh, so hopefully the park will not be very crowded, but we'll see. And uh, I will film along the way and share my setup and some tips. So here we are at the park. It's a beautiful location. There's lots of things to paint here. And I will show you some of the subjects that I think might be good. Today is a cloudy day, so I will try to find some contrasts, probably around the water. On a cloudy day, you can find some really good contrast around the water because um, yeah, if you even look at the picture now with the greenery, there's just not much happening without the light. It's um, gonna be really hard to paint. So this is one subject that might be good to paint. There's lots of contrast with the white flowers and uh, the reflections. Anyway, this is one idea, but I think I'm gonna look around and try to find something else. This is also really beautiful. I love the contrast with the reflections in the water. So that would be a nice one to paint as well. So I think I found a pretty good spot. Uh, it's a really busy day. It's Canada day, so, and the pathways are so narrow. So I think this is my best, best location. I'll show you the subject. I really don't know how I'm gonna make it contrasting, but I will try. I want to incorporate that small Japanese style building and some water. So we'll see how it goes. A quick overview of my setup. I always carry this little piece of cardboard uh, to sit on basically you know so you don't sit on rocks or grass it's pretty good it works it does the job and uh, I used to paint um, on sheets of watercolor paper recently I've been given this sketchbook it's by Etcher um, it was a gift so I started using that this is a painting from another plein air. I have a couple of works here. Some of them work out, some of them don't. That's what I like about plein air, it's quite liberating. You don't have these grand expectations. Anyway, um, this is my palette. It's the same one that I use at home. 
some brushes I take fewer brushes but generally try to bring some um, synthetic ones and some natural hair ones and some of the flats for um, bigger washes for wetting the paper a spray to spray pre-wet my paints a pencil uh, tissues for removing the excess moisture from the brush oops this is a ex expandable from Faber, Faber Castell so it um, collapses and uh, some tape everything fits in my backpack <laughs> and a bottle of water of course for for painting I could probably get an easel at some point and maybe a small chair but right now this works you know and I'm not intimidated and I'm not kind of scared to have so much stuff with me and it's not that much pressure when you have very few minimal items and you think oh it's just you know just plain air nothing nothing grand nothing crazy I'm starting to work on some composition sketches trying out you know horizontal or vertical and one tip that I wanted to share is that when you're painting I'm just starting out especially when there's sunlight and it changes so quickly so I like to take a picture the Sun actually came out for like a few seconds so that was great so I usually take a photo at the very beginning when I start painting and another thing why taking a picture would be helpful is that if you have trouble composing on a piece of paper you know why not go to edit and you have some options to crop so that's how you can try out different compositions if maybe you're not so comfortable with sketching you can quickly assess your ideas with the help of your phone and there's another helpful option with your phone that I wanted to share is if you're having trouble identifying the values you can go to saturation completely reduce the saturation so that makes it black and white and then you can really easily see where are your lightest spots your darkest and the medium I wouldn't say that the phone is should be your tool I think you should still try to figure out the composition by hand and looking at your subject that's what plein air is for so Here's the first wash done. Just some greens and oranges. I think color is very personal, so you can make it whatever you want. Some people may see more yellow here or cooler greens. It is um, what you want it to be. And here's the time for another tip that I forgot to mention is try to wear a baseball cap or a hat because once the sun is out it will be really hard to paint and I'm also be being attacked by mosquitoes right now I didn't think of that so bring a bug spray if you are in a bug buggy area okay so here's the second second wash this is I think the most difficult or wash it is um, yeah you have to keep the variety of brush strokes of texture you have to get the tone right and you also have to work quickly so it is quite complicated so I removed the tape and here's how it looks that's the finished result I think I might maybe add some details at home maybe not we'll see there's a point when you can only make your painting worse by adding details so 
I might as well leave it. So to end this video, I thought I will um, share some benefits of plein air painting that I realized for myself to hopefully <laughs> inspire you. Oh my gosh. To hopefully inspire you to get out and paint. The first benefit is it forces you to be quick so you don't have a lot of time to sit around and um, put lots of details into your painting. So that is a really good benefit. Another one is it forces you to find interesting subjects in everyday life. Uh, you don't rely on photographs from the internet or uh, from your own, from some trips, which is great and interesting, but there's also lots of beauty around us in the everyday. The last benefit, although I'm sure there are many more, but that's the one that I realized, is that it uh, makes you to see the true real colors of the world, of nature. I used to, well, I paint a lot from photographs, so sometimes I find the photo really flattens the colors and doesn't show um, the true color. So that's a great benefit of plein air painting. You can see the color in real life. One last thing I wanted to say is that plein air painting is like um, kind of a paradox on one thing you really need to look for your subject and work out the composition and really try to make it into a good painting. But on the other hand, you also need to let go a little bit and think, well, it's just a plein air sketch. So if it doesn't work out, whatever, no big deal. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found these tips helpful. If you did, Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.